Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, a course in enhancing creativity and artistic confidence. All you need for this course is this book. You can download a PDF or maybe uh, check it out at your library. You just need a pencil, regular pencil, an eraser, and some paper. It can just be scratch paper. Here I used Oh, and possibly a very nice drink that you, whatever you like to eat or drink, <laughs> would be great. Um, I just, um, in this book, it has the instructions in it. Of course, you want to read it too. The first chapter wasn't very long. But here, this book is asking me to do a preliminary drawings. As you see on the right side of the book, you'll see sketches of people that took this course, their first drawing, and then their final drawing and you can see quite an improvement there. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a new video series. Um, it has been one of my goals to learn to draw better. Uh, I just want to be able to draw whatever I want without having any anxiety. My name is Ketra. I'm an artist and I am just kind of doing a journey on this channel from beginning to wherever this artistic journey leads me and I'm glad you're here. So as you can see the first step, well the first part is the pre, what is it called? Sorry, let me get my page here. It's the pre-instruction drawing. So what they're having, what Betty is having you do here is draw, the first one is drawing one, drawing a picture of a person without looking at anyone, and then drawing two is draw a picture of someone, the head only. Drawing three, draw a picture of your own hand. Drawing four, draw a picture of a chair by looking at a real chair. And then after you're finished, on the back of each drawing, write your assessment of your drawing. What is pleasing to you and what is displeasing about the drawing? These comments will be interesting to you at the end of the drawing exercises. So in this video series I'm just going to do a voiceover. As you probably can imagine it's hard to, to draw and talk when you're concentrating. So here you're seeing me draw out of my imagination and I just kind of wanted to read a little bit out of this book as you um, watch me draw and go through these preliminary exercises. Like I said this is a really old book this uh, copyright is 1979. I believe there are other copyrights or other uh, published years. I think one of the more recent one has a Da Vinci girl on the cover. All right, so the whole point of this book is to teach you or teach you or learn how to see. That is, you will learn how to process visual information in the special way used by artists. That way it is different from the way you usually process visual information and it seems to require that you use your brain in a different way than you ordinarily use it. In this book you'll be learning something about how your brain handles visual information. Recent research has begun to throw new scientific light on that marble of capability and complexity in the human brain. So remember, I believe the original book was written in 1979. We are now in 2024, and I imagine there's a lot more research that has been done on the human brain, of course. So, um, drawing and seeing. The magical mystery of drawing, the of drawing ability seems to be in part at least the ability to make a shift in a brain state to a different mode of seeing or perceiving. So for example, when you see in a special way in which experienced artists see, then you can draw. This is not to say that the drawings of great artists such as Leonardo da Vinci or Rembrandt are not still wondrous because we may know something about their cerebral process that went into their creation. Indeed, scientific research makes master drawings seem even more remarkable because they seem to cause a viewer to shift to the artist's mode of perceiving. But the basic skill of drawing is also accessible to everyone who can learn to make the shift 
to the artist mode and see in the artist's way. So again, for me, I, I just really, I'll tell you, I've been drawing since I was, I can, my first memory. And years ago, my husband wanted me to do digital art. And I have been a big fine art, fine art snob. Um, I haven't told too many, but too many people this, but I ex got accepted to the Art Institute in, I would say, 1996. And that's when they were starting a lot of the digital art. And I decided not to go because I didn't want to do art on the computer. I thought, you know, fine art is the way to go. If you're going to be an artist, nobody needs to be doing art on the computer. I kind of regret that decision, honestly. I really wish I would have made myself go. Yes, that was in 1996, but I just can't imagine where I'd be right now, but it doesn't matter. This is where I'm at right now, and I'm loving life. So I was in the mindset of fine, fine arts is the best. However, two years ago, I got an iPad, and I taught myself how to draw digital, di bleh, digitally on Procreate, <clears throat> which has been fun, and I draw much better on the iPad than I do in pen and pencil, I think. So that got me thinking. I really miss drawing. I really miss painting. I miss doing oil painting. I miss, or I just want to draw whatever is in my head, or I want to be able to look and a landscape and draw it, or a person, or a cityscape, or a little cafe, or just whatever. So <clears throat> this book has been on my bookshelf for ages, let's just say, and I thought, why not start the new year off right, and let's do this. Let's do all the exercises in this book, and heck, I'm only going to get better, right? So those are my thoughts on this a drawing challenge, so to speak, and I thought I'd bring you with me, and I hope you join me. Um, let me see. I am reading through the book, so let's see how many. There are 12 chapters. I'm not sure how many chapters have um, the drawing exercises in them, but I will sprinkle <clears throat> my own thoughts and then some reading from the book itself. So if you have any questions, um, please comment down below and um, I'm going to just talk about this first chapter by reading some more from this book. So one of the chapter and one of the headings it says drawing your creative self. By learning to draw you will learn to see differently and as the artist Rodin or Ro I think that's how Ro Rodin Liter lyrically states to become a comp to become a confidant of the natural world, to awaken your eye to the lovely language of forms, to express yourself in that language. And I highlighted that because <coughs> excuse me <coughs> because that's exactly what I've been thinking, you know. Awaken my eyes to the lovely language of forms and to express that. So this book has so much information. I just highlighted the bits and pieces that I thought was interesting. Creative solutions to problems, whether personal or professional, will be accessible through new modes of thinking and new ways of using the power of your whole brain. My hope is that drawing on the right side of the brain will help you expand your power as an individual through increased awareness of your own mind and it's working. Through drawing, you're, you are made visible. The German artist Albrecht Dürer said, from this, the treasure secretly gathered in your heart will become evident through your creative work. I must say, as a side note, there are, this book is chock-a-block full of artist quotes, and just for that alone, <laughs> these quotes are just so really meaningful to me. Let's see, why faces? So why start with the face? So, Betty says, um, I think portrait drawing is useful as a subject for beginners in art. Broadly speaking, all drawing is the same. 
one drawing task is no harder than any, than any other, the same skills and ways of seeing are involved in drawing still life setups, landscapes, the figure, random objects, even imaginary subjects, and portrait drawing. It's all the same thing. You see what's out there, imaginary subjects are seen in the mind's eye, and then you draw what you see. Why then have I selected portrait drawing for some of the exercises? Three reasons. First, beginning students of drawing often think that drawing human faces is the hardest of all kinds of drawings. Thus, when students see that they can draw portraits, they feel confident and their confidence enhances progress. A second more important reason is that the right hemisphere of the human brain is specialized for recognition of faces. Since the right brain is the one we will be trying to gain access to, it makes sense to choose a subject that is that the right brain is used to working with. A third, faces are fascinating. Once you have drawn a person, you will really see, you will really have seen that individual's face. One of my students said, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever actually looked at anyone's face before I started drawing. Now, the oddest thing is that everyone looks beautiful to me. So here you see me um, getting set up for a self-portrait. I don't have a mirror except for in the bathroom. So here I was using my uh, phone, camera phone, to, to draw myself. All right, so the drawing materials, obviously, like I said before, is drawing paper, a pencil. At some stage, uh, Betty suggests to add other materials, such as a stick of charcoal, a felt tip pen, or colored pencils in browns, grays. But for most of the specific exercises, however, pencil, paper, and an eraser are sufficient. And I love the simplicity of that. Um, that's it, just pencil and paper in this book. And she um, really encourages to do all the exercises in this book. Do the exercises one step at a time. Um, she also has put a gloss, a definition of terms in the back. Uh, words like value and composition have their specific and different meanings, which are very helpful as a artist. So she does suggest looking at the terminology in the back of the book. So pre-instructions drawings are a valuable record of your art skills. So she says at this point and before you read further, I would like you to do for pre-instruction drawings to provide a before record of your drawing ability. That is before you're contaminated <clears throat> by the theory that follows. This request usually comes as bad news to the beginning students. The anxiety level goes up and the tension mounts. But if you do them now, by the time you get to the first instruction in chapter four, you will feel confident that you can learn to draw and that you will be ready to try. So true. Um, I could have easily just done this, you know, without filming this on YouTube. But for one, YouTube gives me such accountability because I'm thinking, oh, you never know. Somebody may want to want to um, watch this, and then for me, I may want to <laughs> rewatch it as well. So yeah, accountability for me, and I was super nervous about drawing in front of you guys, but if you've been watching me for a long time, you know, I'm getting pretty used to um, creating in front of you guys. So. And thirdly, I just really wanted to encourage y'all, if you think you can't draw, you can. And I just want to prove that to you guys. Not that I'm bad at drawing, as you can see, but I think I could be a lot better. All right, she also goes on to say, the drawings have proved to be an invaluable, I'm sorry, excuse me, have proved to be invaluable in aiding students to see and recognize their own progress. A kind of amnesia seems to set in as drawing skills improve. Students forget what their drawing was like before instruction. Moreover, the degree of criticism keeps peace 
keep, sorry, keeps pace with progress. Even after considerable improvement, students are sometimes critical of their latest drawing because it's not as good as Da Vinci's. The before drawing provides a realistic gauge for progress. After you do the drawings, put them away and we'll look at them again later on the light of your new, newly acquired skills. Okay, so this one is the one I dreaded the most. It's drawing your hand, and I have tried, probably not as hard as I should have, <clears throat> but several, several times tried to draw hands. So this gave me a lot of anxiety, and you will see. Um, Betty says you should spend at least, what did she say, 15 to 20 minutes on each drawing, and... You could tell just um, <laughs> as I was trying to set up here, um, it's kind of hard to draw your hand when holding down the paper with your other hand kind of thing. But anyway, you'll get the gist. I'm going to fast forward this part um, because it gives me anxiety just watching it. But I'm glad I have the record of it, and I hope by the end of this, 
I will be able to draw hands. Okay, and then here you are going to watch me draw a chair. I draw, sorry, I drew my rolly chair, my computer chair, and it was actually just sitting in the hallway so that I could take a look at it. So um, after this drawing, there are two, four more drawings, um, and they are getting connected with the drawing paper. So I'm going to go ahead and Fast forward through the drawing of the chair, and then I'll talk to you about getting connected with the paper. It was one of my favorite exercises, so enjoy the chair drawing.
All right, let's get connected. So um, Betty says that as an antidote to the high anxiety pre-instruction drawings, try the following exercises to loosen up your drawing hand. <clears throat> Nothing is more intimidating to a beginning drawing student or many experienced, experienced artists for that matter than a clean, white, unmarred piece of drawing paper. One way to get around that is to just start drawing boldly, freely, confidently. For an exercise in getting used to drawing materials and overcoming the intimidation of unmarked paper, lay out one sheet of pristine whiteness and take your pencil in your hand. So basically, what's going to happen here as I'm trying to decipher the instructions is you're basically going to draw around the paper in bold lines going all around the edges and corners and the thing is you can't lift your pencil from your paper. So I chose my China marker. If you've been following me for a long time, it's one of my favorite um, tools to use. So you'll see me here. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it's it's fun. Um, I don't imagine you guys want to sit for, I think this clip is like 11 minutes of me <laughs> drawing. So I'll leave you here to the end of the video.
All right, it's time for the assessment. So what you thought was great and what you thought wasn't so great. And so doing this on camera was a little intimidating because I already had in my mind for each drawing what I liked and what I didn't like. But then to have to reveal that on camera, I got a little gun shy. And uh, you'll see here that I only wrote down one thing for what was pleasing and what was displeasing. So here you can see this is the one out of my head. And dun, 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 what am I going to say? It looks like a cartoon. I like that it looked like a cartoon, but I didn't like what it, that it looked like a cartoon. So that is really it for this part one in the drawing on the right side of the brain. I really hope you come back to me and see part two. I'm excited for it. The exercises are getting really unique and fun. And yeah, for sure, come hang out with me. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Love ya. Thanks for stopping by, and you have a great, great day.